uh, yeah, so uh, the point I was making was that... D did you ever watch The Apprentice? Not really, no. Uh, okay, because um, Alan Sugar pronounces the word resume as resume. So I'm just wondering <laughs> if, like, whenever he wants to resume a film or anything that's on pause, does he also pronounce that as resume? Please, because it's please the same resume word. the film? Yeah. Yeah, but you don't say, please resume the film. Yeah, it's basically the same, isn't it? It's just a bit of an inflection. <laughs> you say so. That's basically all words are, Dan. It's every word is the same amount of letters. It's just the inflection we put on them. Um, yeah, possibly. I'll just turn that down a little bit. Um, I was only thinking about that the other day. What was the word that I was thinking that has two completely separate meanings, but is the same exact word written down? Oh, there are loads of them, and you don't even realise. And then you think, God, if I was a foreign speaker coming into the English language, I'd just be like, screw this. This is just ridiculous. Uh, what was the word? Are we talking... Ah, um, oh, what's the word? Not, not synonyms. Um, no, it's not synonym. It's Yeah. Words that are literally the same. Words that are literally the same, but they are pronounced differently and have different Oh, meanings. like uh, uh, the and die. <laughs> told you we're gonna get off the ground with simpson references eh? we are that was the banjo kazooie intro that i wanted to pay attention to but we've just completely mm. glossed over it but never mind uh so welcome everyone this is the brand new charisma vacuum hangout i suppose uh we're just gonna chat and just ch shoot the shit and not... wallow in our failures exactly we're not gonna give it uh, it's very informal is what i'm trying to say really um unlike the podcast where we had set topics and things this is just a, not really a let's play because i don't want to call it a let's play the video games just kind of in the background while we entertain ourselves um oh, but yeah. so are you actually playing right now um i am uh, or, or i will be in a second um god how do you do it with banjo because we plaster all over the screen and the whole thing pixelating into puzzle pieces well it's funny that you say that because this i um don't want to you know, alert Nintendo or anything, but this is, um, I'm actually doing this on an emulator with a texture pack, so this is a lot cleaner than it otherwise was on the Nintendo 64. Uh, it looks very sharp and, and kind of just a little bit, little bit scrubbed up. Um, okay, but not so much that it looks like a, a completely different game. It's, it's more how you picture it in your mind's eye when you think back exactly. to... Exactly. Uh, exactly. Apart, gotcha. apart from the... Uh, kind of face icons in the in the corner for some reason and the text which mm. is still I, I have no idea what's happened there um but yeah this is banjo kazooie i just figured we'd uh we start the hangout for this because um i don't know it's kind of simple and it's just a collectathon. thon so uh, a bit of inside baseball matt and i tried to do one of these a couple of months ago with uh, with majora's mask and it was mm. a complete disaster because i suddenly <laughs> realized that uh, i can't play games and talk <laughs> and and there was like a 25 second lag so matt was trying to do the the uh the voices bless him for the um for the for the game and it was just wildly out of sync with uh with, to be fair with i thought it was an absolute triumph we were on hot fire streak that night oh and I've... if anything the fact that there was such a lag just added to the charm <laughs> 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 Well, I mean, for you, all, all I remember is just being like, shit, I can't focus. <laughs> I can't focus on that's what I'm saying. So just literally ignored everything you said as I was trying to run around. Um, <laughs> that's a nice little subversion of how we usually do it. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, Banjo-Kazooie uh, requires a little less attention than uh, the Majora's Mask. And um, this is a game I haven't played in... God. When did it come out? 1998. Eight, I think. Yeah, 98. H how do you know that? I uh, I'm an oracle of knowledge. Oh. Yeah, I think it was 1998. It was um the in fact, I'm going a bit of a tangent here and I'll try not to do this, but um it actually was supposed to come out on the day that I left primary school and I remember that day uh, very vividly because um a lot of mixed emotions with uh, leaving school, a lot of excitement and sadness and and all the other things uh, associ associated with it. And um, but uh, above it all, I was like, well, regardless of, of whatever else happens, I've got Banjo Kazooie to look forward to. And then uh, I got in the car after school, feeling really, you know, deflated and 
but thinking, ah, summer and Banjo Kazooie. And, uh, and my mum said, um, it's been delayed <laughs> for for like a, a, for like a month, and um, that was just disappointing, as you as you can imagine. I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah, the same thing happened to me at my primary school, actually. I go on. Um, well, uh, of things coming out, um, okay. we were all expecting Christopher McKay to come out that day, but the coward <laughs> that he was, he decided that uh, no, he was gonna. You know, keep it all bottled up, and now he's married with a wife and sham kids, and and living a phony life, and uh, and just living the lie. It wasn't quite banjo kazooie, but uh, you know, it's sort of sort of on the same level. I wondered where you were going with that, and you didn't disappoint. Um, so yeah, this is the intro. I can't skip it, otherwise I would have done. And um, <laughs> there isn't too much to say about the general story. You've got a witch, and she steals. Banjo's young sister to make herself look young and all that kind of thing and here we are so that uh, sounds like it has a lot more to unpack in it than you're making it out to be it really there's doesn't. a witch Dan there's a witch and she stole a bear to regain her youth this needs unpacking <laughs> you've you've obviously never played the n64 rare games have you but um <laughs> uh, I have actually have you have you really what have you played I have I am very familiar with this game oh okay tell me more I, I don't know if I knew that. Uh, I'm really not a fan. Really, really not a fan. I like collectathons, um, but I'm not a fan of the Nintendo uh, sort of sandboxy world of games like this and, and Mario 64 that were out at the time. But beyond all that, all I remember is just a relax. <laughs> just relentlessly. And then the witch cackling and just just rape of the ears is how I describe <laughs> the audio track for this game. It is not a pleasant game to listen to at all. And I found it ugly as well and clunky and I wanted to enjoy it um, because it was it was like Spyro. Um, but it, it just lacked any of the charm. And, and my God, could they just do what Conker did and record some voices? When did you play it then? Did you play in the 90s? Uh, yeah, it would have been the late 90s. Ah, okay, interesting. Mm. Um, I mean, this was like... Uh, I, 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 it's, it's difficult for me to say, but back then this was like um, the pinnacle of charm. What the hell's the matter with this? Why? I know, I know people absolutely loved and still love this game, but it's never appealed to me at all. Uh, oh, actually, the one game I did enjoy was uh, Donkey Kong Country. Country on the SNES? Oh, no, not that one then. Uh, 64. Whichever donkey... 64, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That, I mean, that's surprising because uh, Donkey Kong 64 has not aged particularly well. Or that's a general consensus, is that it's, it's not as good as people remember it to be. Well, um, that's it. I've not touched it in 20 years. So yeah. I'm purely going off memories and comparing it to Banjo-Kazooie. I mean, this was... Um, I think we've had this conversation before on one of the podcasts, but I... Um, I, I I love this game. This was one of my favorite games back when I was a kid, and um, I should really be listening to what they're trying to tell me. But <laughs> <laughs> really, that <laughs> it's like, deciphering it's, the squawking, the squealing, the blurging. You double can just jump. Read the letters. Double jump. That's what I'm supposed to be going. Okay. Um, no, it's it's just what it's like. These are the t tutorial section, and I'm supposed to be doing an actual, uh, uh, you know, doing the bits that they tell me to. Um, mm. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I really enjoyed it and then played it again just briefly. Um, <laughs> you're completely lying to what I said earlier. <laughs> um, I played it I played it like a year or two ago. And um, why? What am I supposed to be doing? Hold, oh, hold that, then press A and go for it. Okay, so which one's that on this? Ah, okay, back jump. All right. Um, and yeah, I, I, uh, uh, I'm more willing to take into account all the criticism that you say with regards to the um, uh, the uh, the annoyingness of it, which again, mm. I just think that's what Rare was um, at that time. That's the what, game. Annoying. Yeah, 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 pretty much. When you... <laughs> they, they were very kind of um, uh, cheeky, cheeky British, I suppose, is, is, mm. is, is the best way to describe it. Um, and uh yeah that's that's that was their style um i do remember something behind the waterfall was um 
just uh, really cheeky dialogue and it's like, oh, you don't get this in Mario and, uh, and that kind of style. Um, mm. Very, very um, uh, irreverent, uh, breaking the fourth wall kind of thing. And uh, it was pretty revolutionary for the time, or at least certainly from what um, I remember being 11. Yeah. Or I do remember it being a bit weird when Kazooie shouts, show me a gash at the, uh, the witch <laughs> and thinking that's pretty on the nose. <laughs> but then then they brought out Conquer, uh, oh, was it Bad Fur Day? And Conquer's then that became Live and Reloaded on the on the Xbox. Um, yeah, I never played I enjoyed it. Conquer because, I mean, it's, it's childish humour, just pure vulgar childish humour, like just poo jokes and, and saying shit periodically. But you know, as a teenager, it's like, oh, 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 they're, they're saying the rude things. But um, at least it had voice acting, whereas if it was the sound of a, a squirrel chirruping for X amount of time and then move on to read the next joke, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. Mm. But that was just full of crude humour. Yeah, that's what they... I think... I mean, they're, they're very self-aware, or the guys at Rare were, anyway. And uh, that's definitely what they wanted to do, because um, their original plans for Conquer's Bad Fur Day, I think, was actually for something quite wholesome. And they released a game on the Game Boy Color called Conquer's Pocket Tales, which completely went over my head as a youth um, for the innuendo <laughs> in, in, in that name. And, uh, and it was really clean cut and... Um, you know, inoffensive, and it was just a terrible, terrible game. In fact, that's that's mm. something that I will always hold against Rare and Nintendo Official Magazine. They gave this absolute travesty of a game, just the most rudimentary piece of shit, uh, like a ninety in Nintendo Official Magazine. And mm. um, I, I got it really because my... it had the Rare logo. Yeah, pretty much. Um, mm. And shit, what am I supposed to be doing? Did you just tell me? Oh, that's right. And um, uh, yeah, because uh, it had the Rare logo, um, the magazine were like, well, this obviously deserves a, a 90. And that was one of the first times that my faith in the establishment was, <laughs> was questioned. It's very we rocked cool. to its core. And, um, <laughs> and, and that was the start of, uh, of my fallout with Nintendo Official Magazine. Um, yeah, that's when you officially founded Anonymous. <laughs> it is, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Robot was based on my life from that point. <laughs> Could you imagine how disappointed fans would be? They get to the end of Mr. Robot and then find out that it was all one pissed off teenager's reaction to rare games <laughs> getting a free pass back in the early nineties. <laughs> well, to be honest, I mean, I got to season season three or four. I can't remember where they are with Mr. Robot now, but um, it kind of went off the rails so much that it may as well have been something like that. Which is a shame, because the first season was amazing. Oh, um, season one was amazing, yeah. I remember you saying that you have to stick with season two. Yeah, oh, because it's worth it for the ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the um, the ending of, of season two does... It, I mean, the, it is. It's a, it's a slog, season two, in, in a lot of respects. But um, they do something at the end, which is just makes it worth it just... Um, but the problem with Mr. Robot, I think, was that uh, the real world kind of outpaced it for just how nuts um, it became. And um, I think they actually reference Trump in one of these seasons, certainly the last season that I saw. Oh, that's always a mistake to bring the real world into fiction. I, it was the way, but it kind of made sense-ish because it was the only way they could acknowledge that what they were doing wasn't as crazy as, <laughs> as as what was already happening because it was supposed to be about this hacker collective that kind of changed the world and then we have this um, uh, uh, reality uh, star made president essentially and so they had to almost um, acknowledge that when you look at the things that happened with uh, Snowden and, and, and you know that that's what it was kind of based off but we we, we were getting more things like that by the week and it just a bit like house of cards actually house of cards was the same yeah um, that uh that rapidly became redundant didn't it yeah i just realized i can't swim 
Swim, that's another thing that irritates me about banjo kazooie it's like you don't have to swim you can fucking drown to get that thing but <laughs> banjo is so inept that he has to learn to just dunk to stop swimming um yeah it's another reason i hate games like this um so the the padding out of the content well that's essentially what collectathons are that's what i realized i think donkey kong, we're talking about donkey kong 64 that's the game that maybe realize that collector thongs are just padding from the first minute to the last minute of the game um uh, yeah it's something compared to uh i mean you, you said that you didn't like super mario 64 but super mario 64 is just a, a, a masterpiece in in game design and all kinds of things uh, as far as i'm concerned whereas the rare games why for me personally they don't hold up as much is because you can do everything in a level in one go and i know a lot of people will prefer that but um it just makes the experience feel very um i don't know i, I just don't get the thrill from being like oh i collected all the coins or mm. musical notes in this as it were it's, it's it's just like you know once you've done it in one level it's it's like you know, you know, what I'm trying to say does that makes sense. Oh, I see where you're going with it. Mm. I mean, I, I enjoy the Lego games, and those are nothing but time wasting collectathons. They're essentially just things I put on in the background so I can, you know, listen to podcasts without feeling guilty. But at least with the the Lego games, particularly say the Star Wars ones, great example is that they will block off your progress because your character doesn't have that ability, yeah. rather than oh, we just can't be bothered to teach Banjo how to swim. Uh, and right. you know it, it makes sense that oh well you can only unlock vader once you finish the game you know so you can't get this or that until then so it, it, it does a good job of balancing out the collectathon this banjo's got a complete mind of his own half the entertainment of this is just when he wants to frigging do what i tell him to do um sorry yeah i am listening mm. um the there's something i think the the addictive quality with the Lego Star Wars games, or the Lego games in general. Banjo, move the direction I tell you to. Christ <laughs> sake. Um, well, this he, is the polished version. He literally just stopped. I, I don't know if it's my controller or the emulator or what. I do own the game Nintendo. I can, I, If you want me to send you photos, I'll, I'll send you a photo. I do own the game, so don't sue me. Um, if you want to send me a new official copy so I can play it yeah, properly, <laughs> then please do. Uh, no, it's, if you want to send me a brand new Nintendo 64 with um, with uh, streaming capabilities, my N64 I found out recently, which broke my heart, has got a thing that apparently a lot of Nintendo 64s are experiencing in their old age, and it just switches off after um, like a certain amount of time, and no oh, one wow. really knows why. They have theories about whether it's to do with RAM, um, or the power supply, or something like that, but. Uh, yeah, it's an increasingly common thing, and it devastates me when I, when I realize that. Um, Damn. Yeah, pain. <laughs> Banjo! This, this, this episode's just going to be, like, turning to be raging at this stupid bad... Look, I'm, I'm <laughs> I mean, pressing... I'm silently sitting there in smug satisfaction that I knew I was right <laughs> for the last 20 years. It's, it's not the, this wouldn't be happening if we were playing it on the console. I don't know what the problem well, is. Well, you say it. that, but... <laughs> Maybe it's you. Maybe your gaming skills just aren't as good as you always said they were. Yeah. <laughs> back when you used to tell me, you know, way back in the day, hey, Matt, I completed Banjo-Kazooie back in 1999. <laughs> I was like, no way. And you were like, uh-huh. And you've been coasting on that for bloody a, a decade plus now. And now we finally see you for what you are. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I mean, I could drop the, blood, the Bloodborne Platinum in there, but uh, let's not go with go that way um. <laughs> oh that's nothing absolutely nothing there's no proof that you've ever managed to finish banjo kazooie <laughs> the true bloodborne of its era that's dark enough. souls was heavily influenced on this game mm -hmm. mm. i mean that's another thing about um retro games as well is that the, the with the a lot of battery packs are dying in the uh, in the game cartridges and things so you've actually got no uh no record of your of your previous saves or what you've done mm. and that's another thing which is uh, devastating as a oh that happened to my pokemon awesome. gold i had all 251 of the bastards oh. and then it developed a fault where every single time you loaded it up it was always a new game 
Oh, and yeah, that's just going to be the case with any cartridge at this point, I think. Yeah. And all I do is look back on like all the family holidays where I dragged the Game Boy along and just spent, you know, at least three quarters of the holiday, my head buried in the Game Boy, trying to get a Tranatar from level 60 to level 65 over the course of like a fortnight, because that's how long it took back in the good old days of Pokemon. And all of that was for nothing now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's... I think my my Pokemon Red game is probably the same. I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to try and figure this out just with the control. Just make sure that... Uh, that the... Right. Up. Analog stick. Up. Okay. Right. Is there a dead zone control is plugged in? Sorry, guys. <laughs> right. Let's let's see if this works, shall we? No. Well, fuck you, Ben. <laughs> fuck you. I I do have a bit of a story behind this uh, first uh, jigsaw in that uh, when I finally did get my hands on um, Banjo Kazooie, um, I think it was just a random. I think I had it pre-ordered from Electronic Boutique in town or something like that. And uh, my mum, bless her, went into town especially on the day that I finished primary school to, to go and pick it up. And and, and that's why she was like, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't come out yet for another month or whatever. And then um, she was just in town and checked to see if it had come in yet. And um, it had. And I was at a friend's at the time when it had come in. And she came to pick me up and said, um, I'm, I'm just here because uh, because it's... The banjo kazooie's come out and you know you can either stay here with your friend or, or you, you, can, you can you can come home and it was like oh god i desperately want to go home but i feel really rude to come over to my friends and be like bye <laughs> <laughs> really i would have dropped it in a hat trick i would have shouted at mother you didn't collect me from school earlier for this <laughs> um and so i was just like i want to, i just want to I'm, I'm you know me i'm a nice guy i uh why is this not? Oh, there we go. Um, so I was like, well, you know, uh, why don't you come back home with me and we'll play it together? And um, and my friend was like, yeah, okay, all right, we'll do that. We'll we'll go back and to yours and play banjo Um And so we got to that point with the jigsaw, and I was so kind of OCD in, in back when I was a kid that uh, he 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 had the controller and he saw the jigsaw and it's like the first one that. That you get in the game and um he said oh so we collect this and all i could think in my head was i don't want this person to be the first person to get a jig jigsaw in my game and i was just like no that's not what you collect no <laughs> you, you don't don't go towards that i'm pretty sure that'll kill you um and anyway he ignored me and he picked it up and that annoyed me <laughs> then for the rest of like however long i played banjo kazooie and i've never forgotten it that um, that a friend of mine was the first person to get a jigsaw in my game, and um, and I couldn't get over it. <laughs> and yet, despite that, we're still talking to this day. <laughs> ha, ha, ha! Very true. Um, no, that was uh, I, I haven't spoken to that friend in, in a long, long time. Actually, don't I'm know what he's doing. Always. The one time I remember having a friend over back in the good old days of the PlayStation, because the PlayStation was my best friend back then. Uh, but there was one time I allowed a human near my house to uh, to engage with it, and he um, I had Crash Bandicoot two one hundred percented, which was <gasps> no. at the time a hell of an achievement. Don't tell me because... where this is going. Yes, um, if you uh, if you know anything about Crash Bandicoot two, to get the coloured gems, you have to do various things like um, certain levels have timers. You know, get to the end of the level before the time runs out. And as a kid with stupid fingers back then, it was really difficult to, to manage to get to the end of a level within 45 seconds. Um, but I did it by gum. It took months, if not a year or two, to do it. But finally 100% of that game, and it was one of my proudest achievements. And my friend managed to find a way of saving a Bugs Life level 1 over it. <gasps> No, oh, God, it was just painful. I remember going through the memory cards like, no, that can't be right because there should be a picture of Crash Bandicoot there, not a not a picture of Flick the Ant. Um, I I must be looking at the wrong memory card, and and just the slow dawning horror. Uh, and the friend had left by that point as well, so I couldn't even chew him out and and give him a piece of my mind. But um, 
yeah, it, it was one of the most crushingly devastating things to happen in my childhood in that regard. And uh, and here we are, 22, 23 years later, and I still haven't quite got over it, even though I finished the game numerous other times, 100%ed it. But, uh, oh, that, that was a bitter, bitter time. Well, I mean, you know, if it makes you feel any better with regards to the early conversation, uh, that battery is probably long dead now, and so you'd have lost it anyway. <laughs> yeah, just like all the, the trophies we've been working our way towards over the last couple of years. They'll all mean nothing soon enough, because they'll just be blank things that don't even fire up. Well, yeah, if anything happens... It's a horrible thought. If anything happens to the Sony servers, then we're, uh, mm. we're, we're screwed. Um, oh, don't worry, because Sony servers are reputably safe as houses. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, yeah, so we've got that to look forward to one day, I'm sure. Mm. Oh, you have to collect eggs as well. I've forgotten about that. Oh, God, there's so much collecting. And everything talks. Why does everything talk? I think that's another thing that really irritated me about this game. It's like, hi, I'm Mr. Egg. I am an egg. Oh, shut the fuck up and get in the backpack. <laughs> Everything has an opinion on nothing in this game, in this world. Yeah, I can't really argue with that. That's that's pretty... Yeah, you're correct. Mm. Uh, Jingos? Yay. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a classic level, though, really. It's a very... Uh, uh, I'm going to say well-respected. I don't know if it is, but it's a very beloved opening uh, opening level, I think. Mm. Um the this the, seriously it's it's not me it's this i don't know as i say the, the control it, he won't go up why won't he go up stupid <laughs> um yeah 10 jigsaw pieces in each level so you just kind of wander around and do various different bits and pieces until you collect them all um i seem to remember i got stuck at the um there's a, there's a level where you fight a giant fish the, is it like a robotic like a... fish kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. That. That's <laughs> the one. I was like, um, I don't know, would you call it squeamish or I don't know? But as, as a kid, like that, that really disturbed me. The gills, like, they just made me sick mm. because you have to <laughs> swim into them, and I was just like, <laughs> 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 uh, even even though it's like a robot or something, I think. But, uh... I can remember. Definitely beating it. I finished the level, but I think by that point I needed a jigsaw piece and I couldn't find it or just didn't have the, the necessary skill or patience to get whatever was needed to get to the next level. And then by that point I was so just frustrated with the game as a whole that I turned off and never went back to it again. Yeah. Um, I can appreciate that. I, um, I never actually... Do, do you know about the... Oh, we'll deal with that when we get to it, I'm sure. But I'll bring that up later um so what else was i gonna say i was gonna say something and then i threw myself off no i can't remember uh no it's come i got stung <laughs> earlier today by a wasp really it's really why? painful why would you do that why, why would i do that yeah um i don't know for the why do you leave yourself so open to wasps uh, wasp stings well there are wasps all over the garden and um it's, but they, they've been quite docile, uh, despite mm. the, their reputation. They generally would come and sniff around and then, you know, run off without getting too... Uh, you made them sound like local neighbourhood cats. Well... <laughs> oh, the local wasps come into the garden. We sometimes pet them and feed them. And <laughs> as long as you don't do them, no bother. They'll leave you alone without nay a scratch. <laughs> you have very friendly cats. Our, our cats around here aren't that friendly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they 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 kind of like they they're only really interested in. Well, I mean, I say that we've got a we've got a feral cat in our in our garden for crying out loud that um, that uh, that we just let roam around and and stuff. Mm. But so we leave food out for her. But these wasps are attracted to that food, and I never really kind of gave too much thought to what wasps do when they hang around, you know, bins and things, and um, they actually like. They, they consume, like, the food in a... Mm. As, like, just sit on it and eat it. <laughs> yeah, and they it's, kinda, it's all for the good of the nest. And, and Yeah, and kind of just mm. drag it around and stuff. And I was... I don't know why I'd, I never really considered that that's what they do. Because it's like, uh, bees, obviously, um, go into flowers and things, and they pollinate the flowers and mm. whatever else 
however that happens and things. Um, but wasps are like, no, I'm just going to sit and eat this piece of meat. <laughs> and it's, no, no, it's, it's not quite the same thing. Bees bees take the pollen and, and make honey and, and nice sweet yeah, things. Yeah. And yeah. wasps yeah. chew up the food and make pain and misery. Yes, pretty much. It's, it's specifically what they need the energy for. Yeah. It's like, have you ever woken up or, or just had a really bad thought? Uh, sure. Uh, and just everything's just felt a little bit like, eh. That, that's because out there somewhere a wasp has finished doing its like wasp synthesizing technique. And it's just like, there you go. Here's a little bit more pain and misery and woe in the world. <laughs> Thanks, wasps. Yeah, and I was... So, I've just been kind of letting them do the thing because they've not really been... I mean, they, they get in the way, obviously, but they've not kind of got in the way too much and then i was just um i was just working out in the garden earlier literally minding my own business away from anywhere and i just found uh, you know felt this um really sharp painful burning sensation mm. um literally underneath my armpit and um anyway wait a minute that's not where my chlamydia usually strikes <laughs> and and yeah i'd been stung and i was like it's really painful. <laughs> mm. I think the last time I can't even remember the last time I was I was stung. Um, but it was just I was like, well, now we're at war, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take it out <laughs> on all the wasps because you know I didn't do anything. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna cleanse the garden of wasps because that one wasp has ruined it for everyone now. Um, <laughs> Did you consider stinging them back with a witty barb? <laughs> <laughs> You're just shit bees or substandard hornets. Substandard hornets. That's that's what that really um... gets into their skin. <laughs> you, I can feel the queen of all wasps writhing in in frustration at that. It's like, no, we're way better than wasps. We can sting. It's like, yeah, well, hornets can't, and yet they garner as grand a reputation as you, with less effort. So you know who's really the king? They're wasp. You won't be as familiar with this, I don't think, but there are a lot of uh, sports teams and things that um, name themselves, mainly American sports teams, but they kind of, you know, might be one that call themselves the Wasps or the Bulls or the Bees or whatever. <laughs> so, you're, you're it's right. that one team, the Wasps or the Bulls or the Bees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I like your idea of, um, <laughs> you know, the substandard hornets, I think, is um, <laughs> would be an excellent... <laughs> uh, and here they come, sashaying <laughs> onto the field now. It's the substandard hornets. <laughs> My, don't they cut a simply adequate pose. <laughs> <laughs> and they just constantly feel inferior all the time. <laughs> they're basically disenfranchised wasps <laughs> but they're fine with that you know they've got their place in the world yeah exactly. I mean, well, exactly. I've only ever been stung by a wasp once and it was in the middle of the night I mean what wasps are active in the middle of the night I, I was woken up about 2 in the morning by a, like I say, a searing burning pain on my arm and somehow a wasp managed to get into my room in the dead of night and decided, ah, fuck it, I'll sting this guy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I just remember dousing myself in, uh, was it vinegar? Vinegar? I can't remember. Uh, is it alkali or acid that wasp stings are? Uh, I would have thought acid, but... Okay, so it would have been an alkali, so I don't know, maybe oh, I'd, no. like, don't... maybe I, like, squeezed a bee over it and it, it popped and, uh, and doused the venom. Mm. But, uh, yeah, searing pain, like, I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I, I think my arm's still, like, kind of swollen up. Um, should have really done something about it, but, uh, hey, oh, there we go. I can't remember <laughs> what I'm supposed to be doing here. So, right, let me let me have a look. So I've got... That is the curse of Banjo-Kazooie. It's just a case of, like, oh, it's got to be something really mundane. <laughs> but what button combination do I need to push to pull off the executive move? So, okay. Oh, I... Look at all of those things. Oh, God. I remember this guy. Right, so you need to do the oranges with this guy. Oh. I mean, you don't get this kind of uh, originality in the Spyro games. Let's 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 put it that way. True, but the Spyro games I found immensely enjoyable, and I've played and played and played, and then bought the remastered versions and played and played and played those. Whereas Banjo Kazooie, I've never finished more than I'm guessing fifty percent of it. Well, that's just like. Your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, but at least Spyro's got a voice. He's not just gawfing. 
Like a substandard goofy. You see, now... What did this chimp want from me? He just told me to do something. I can't remember. What did this chimp want from me? <laughs> <laughs> well, we found the name of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, he just... I, I obviously need Is to... Is it fruit? Get Don't you have something. to grab, like, one of the fruit things and throw oh, it at him? Oh, yeah, so I do. Yeah, I need to get that. Yeah. There you go, and I've not played this game in 20 years. Well, that's true. But uh, you, you have a better memory for some things over others, which is really bizarre. It's like your hearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my bat-like hearing. Yet my ability to completely not hear a single thing that the people are telling me when needed. <laughs> exactly. You're, you're just just an amazing uh, brand of just hypocrisies in, in the most confusing way. It's, uh, <laughs> Hypocrisy, thy name is Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it's really quite incredible. Um, as I say, just the most amazing memory for some things, and then it's like, you can't remember people's faces. <laughs> and I the, think the I names. generally have face blindness. Face blindness? There are people now that I've known for the last two years, and it's like, I can't remember if your names say Emma or Emily, so it's just really embarrassing, so I'll just avoid calling you by any name on the off chance <laughs> I picked the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, There's only so many ways you can say, hello, my dude, to, to, a, to a bunch of women. It's like, I just don't know any of your names. <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> Third from the I, left. <laughs> um, I mean, here, here's a perfect example. We, uh, we, I'll, I'll use the Emily Emma uh, uh, example to avoid naming names. But we have an Emma and an Emily in, in the class. And I'd heard that Emma was pregnant over the summer. And so we finally meet up again over uh, in the September. And what do I do? I go to Emily. Oh, well done. I heard that you're pregnant. And oh. it's like, no, that's, that was Emma. And I, it's a good thing someone like stopped me first and foremost because I was about to say, you're coming along, aren't you? <laughs> it's like, oh, shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, God. It's, just, if two people have a similar name, it doesn't matter if they look nothing alike. One could be Asian, the other one could be purple. And I'm not going to remember which is which, or which <laughs> one's pregnant, even if one's a dude. <laughs> it could be a parasite, for all I know, that's laid eggs. And they've decided to keep them and go full term. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it might be a, a genuine medical condition. And I should get funding for it. And frankly, the government should acknowledge me. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, what's that from? Is that from a thing? Acknowledge me? Is that from a show um, or something? There's um, Ignore Me from the Venture Brothers, if you ever saw that. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Oh, it's fantastic. It's like this, um, almost like the Silver Surfer or, or the Watcher. It's a piss take of the Watcher from uh, from Marvel. And it's okay. this huge robot that you can't help but notice. And every time it engages you in conversation, it then leaves an awkward pause and then bellows, Ignore me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that show is so good. <laughs> it's one of those shows I've always been meaning to get around to. Uh, it takes a while to warm up to, like a lot of the adult swim shows. Hmm. You have to get used to the characters and the in-jokes. and Almost like The Sopranos, you know, the, the first season layers, or Archer, the first season layers on the jokes at a baseline, and then everything that comes after is built on that. So if you skip ahead a couple of seasons or catch a random episode, it won't be as funny as if you were like completely versed in every episode up to that point. Archer is one of those that I really wanted to get into, and just... It, I just couldn't get into it at all, no matter how much I tried. And I think a lot of that was because um, I've forgotten his name now, but he voices uh, Bob from Bob's Burgers as well. Mm. I just I couldn't get past that. Which is, oh, there's an episode in season four. Um, I think it's season three. Ends with him in a coma, and. At the beginning of season four, he's sort of built a new life for himself. He's forgotten his previous life, and he's a burger chef. And they've got all the <laughs> voice actresses, uh, voice actors, and the one actress back. And it's just an episode of Bob's Burgers, but with like Archer instead of uh, Bob. And then the team have to come and find him and re remind him that actually you're a secret agent and uh, and drag him out. It's it's really really good cross branding. Oh, that's excellent. Cross branding with Men in Black, I take it. Yes, the animated series of Men in Black, which was surprisingly good. Did you ever watch that? I'm sure I did back in the day. What year will that have been? Like, 99? 99, 2000? Yeah. Oh, actually, when was Men in Black? 2000s? 
Uh, 97, I think. So it would have been about 98, 99. Men in Black was 90... Oh, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. When was Men in Black 2? I remember feeling... 2002. I remember feeling really old going to see Men in Black 2. And, um... <laughs> we all felt very old by the time <laughs> we see Men in Black 2. <laughs> no, but, you know, like, I, 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 that feeling as a kid where you think, I'm too old for this. I shouldn't be. Uh, I shouldn't be in this cinema watching this anymore. And, and for some reason, I had that feeling watching Men in Black too. So I'd have been about sixteen yeah. or something. Um, it's it's a very childish film. Yeah. And not only the fact that it's like for children, but it's just so unnecessary. written. Yeah, and unnecessary and and weakly written that uh, it does feel like a, a film for particularly slow children. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the regular slow children. It's um, that was one of the first films I was ever majorly disappointed by. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. Mm. For years and years, I was waiting for Men in Black too because I loved the first film, and then um, I had like the making of book and everything, you know, and, and oh, the wow. um, the the novel of the film, and it's like, oh man, when this comes out. And of course, because all of those books were written before they had to change the ending because of nine eleven. Uh, they had to change everything, and the film was a complete compromise mess. I did, and it went from that. being one of the yeah, yeah, the the whole film. The I think the finale of it, they were going to be like racing around the the twin towers while what was her name? Was it Saline, Selena, whatever the the, the alien from Twin Peaks was? Um, <laughs> she was going to be attacking the World Trade Center. All right. And uh, yeah, so they they had to rewrite it all at the last minute. Barry Sonnefeld didn't want to do it in the first place, but studio contractual obligations they sort of forced him to do it. Always a great sign. And then they had to literally rewrite and refilm the entire third act essentially um, in a matter of months in order to get it out for the deadline in in the summer. Wow. And it shows. Yeah. Well, that suddenly makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah, Laura mm. Flynn Boyle, I think, was. Um... The uh, the villainess in the movie um, of Twin Peaks. That's all I know, Laura Flynn Boyle, from is Twin Peaks. Actually. Twin Peaks and Men in Black 2. And, um, <laughs> she was in something quite recently, actually. Hang on. I the, saw a um... photo of her recently and I didn't recognise her at all. I mean, obviously yeah. she, she's older, but she must have had a lot of work done. Um... Laura Flynn Boyle. Um, what did I see her in? Uh, threesome. Oh, baby's day out. Now there's a classic. Yeah, that's that's one of those. Do you ever? I mean, obviously, we know that you're um, uh, kind of <laughs> come on, Dan, uh, find hand, the word hand, hand, handicapped in that department of remembering faces. But that's one of those things where I haven't seen that film in years. But when I heard that it was Laura Flynn Boyle, I was like, oh yeah, of course it is. Oh, yeah, I, I can see that now. That's it's, what I saw in the other day, Poltergeist Three. There's a sentence you won't hear anyone else ever <laughs> saying this side of 1997. What year was that from? Uh, 1988? Yes, 1988. I oh, rather okay. like the Poltergeist trilogy. I think it holds up quite well. I haven't seen any of them, which won't be a surprise. Really? Not even the first one? How the hell am I supposed to do this? Um, no, not, not even the first one. Oh, it's it's worth it. Check it out. It's, it's good fun. She's in... Um, a film called. Hang on, I've lost it. Where's it gone? He did, did just uh, tell just... me to feed it, Max, didn't he? What the hell am I supposed to do here? Oh, here we go. Uh, a film called Land of the Blind, and I want to see what a crossover with the Land Before Time would be like. Because <laughs> they did everything else. Why not? Yeah, sure. Um, oh, she didn't even appear in the mini series of Twin Peaks. That's surprising. Uh, she, I think she's a bit of a recluse these days. When was the last film she did? Uh, TV 2008. Oh, she's in a film this year, uh, last year, Death in Texas. Oh, oh okay. Uh, um, 2015, 2013. Although actually, 2010. um, sorry, no, to, but but to be more, um, uh, even more specific, she didn't come back for Fire Walk with me, and um, I think that was because I don't know if she kind of fell out with everyone um, after the series kind of wrapped she had a thing with Cal McLaughlin and mm. um, they actually changed have we spoken about this before do you know that story about how they um, changed they kind of forced 
I don't know if it was David Lynch at the time because he kind of stepped away at that point, but whoever was writing the show, she got jealous of um, uh, uh, Sherilyn Fenn. No, Sherilyn Fenn, because she mm. was, uh, as Audrey Horn, she was supposed to, uh, she and Dale Cooper were supposed to be the item, uh, but she was really jealous of her. So um, she, they, she made them rewrite um, Dale's love interest, and that's when Heather Graham came into it. Of course, yeah. Uh, that why did that work? What the hell have I been doing up until this point? Where the, okay, all right, okay, there we go. Oh, here, here's a bit of trivia about Men in Black Two <laughs> singers. That's well, I mean, we've gone a lot of places. Yeah. Okay, so um, the bad news is that the film. <laughs> Sorry, well, I although, well, well, I shit these eggs into this mouth. <laughs> yeah, well, you shit the eggs, and we'll talk about Men in Black. So it. Um, it lost the best visual effects in uh, Driven Motion Picture to The Two Towers, which, hell of a shame. <laughs> but it did pick up the Razzie Award nomination for Worst Supporting Actress, Lara Flynn Boyle. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a double punch for you. She must have really not given a shit. And that's Well, you can see that in the film. Oh, totally, yeah. Oh, Where's Zaria Dawson's in that film, though? Made in Black? Yeah, she's uh, Kay's daughter. How old is she? Young teens, she must be. Um, <laughs> she's Kay's... How many bloody times do they rewrite Kay's history? Because he's got the the love of his life, who he never hooked up with in the first movie, and then he finally gets with her, and then they drag him out of retirement to reveal that he's got a secret half-caste daughter... Or mixed race daughter. I was going to say you don't have to say that. Just be... <laughs> um, mixed race. Um, and then in Men in Black Three, we zoom back to the past, and he's getting with L, played by Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth... And then it's only when they got around to Men in Black International, they just said, you know what, let's just fucking start all over again. But yeah, <laughs> Kay has the most inconsistent timeline for romances. Uh, Rosario Dawson, Men in Black 2. Da, 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 da. What the hell is this last mumbo jumbo thing? <laughs> People also ask, what is Men in Black 2 called? <laughs> <laughs> I, think that, I think just what is Men in Black 2 is. is <laughs> it just works, as, works just as well. Why is Men in Black 2? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I just oh, realised... I just realised that there are two Men in Black films I haven't seen. There was de there was a Men in Black three, mm -hmm. wasn't there? And that was which was better than two. And that had Jermaine Clement in yeah. as the yes. villain, and doing his best Tim Curry impression. Oh, okay, I can see that. He's the best part of that film, but he's criminally underused. He has about four scenes. Four scenes, really? But yeah, they they have to crack uh, cram in as many Will Smith scenes as possible. So the villain only has four scenes in the entire movie, but there's a lot of how do we get Will Smith interacting with um, Josh Brolin? Oh, fuck off. Um, are all the gags around Jermaine Clement essentially his accent? Is, is that pretty much? No, it? he has no gags. Oh, okay. That... He laughs weirdly at some people on a bench, and that is the only <laughs> thing. I, I, I'm not kidding. I don't. I imagine you're not kidding. That's. Yeah, that that is the closest thing, and it's not even like a kind of like funny weird laugh. It's more like, oh, he's doing a, a bit of a monster laugh, and that's it. He's just playing angry villain. I don't know why they used him beyond. Well, he's Jermaine Clements. Let's just put him in in a in a monster suit, and he can be made of fingers. Ooh, that's his shtick. <laughs> they had a cockroach, <laughs> made a plant fingers. woman, a guy a guy made of fingers, and then the really lazy. Copy paste. All our agents have blue eyes for Men in Black International. Oh. <sighs> it's such a wasted film series. The first one is great and it still holds up. It, it's a superb film, and the sequels manage to be. Each one does outdoes the other one. Like Men in Black Two is just badly written. Men in Black Three fucks with the timeline of things. And the characters' backstories. Uh, Men in Black International is just a complete failure. Just a boring slog of a movie with no jokes, no creativity. 
it, it, each one is bad for different reasons. Is Will Smith not in the last one at all? No, it's Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and um, what's his name? The wolf, the the man that punched a wolf and and killed half of Europe. Um, the the guy, he's always angry. Um, he he Genghis, was Schindler. Genghis Khan. Geng Genghis Khan, as played by Liam Neeson. Oh, okay. Well, the man who's always walking and talking. <laughs> I, love, I love how you, you don't go for, like, Qui Gon Jinn. <laughs> mm. he, he punched a wolf and killed half of Europe. Well, I figure that most people will have, like, repressed the memory of the Phantom Menace, so. Oh, well. He's more famous, like Keanu Reeves. If, if you go, you know, Keanu Reeves. No way! Or, um... Uh, what are any of his lines from The Matrix? Whoa. Whoa. I know Kung Fu. Now, now people yeah, know uh, going, <laughs> yeah, in John Wick. What are some... I mean, you got Bill and Ted. What else has he been in? Um, Toy Story 4? Yeah, but they're not... Right, so I need to go. I just need to find that last mumbo jumbo. I uh, you can't token call thing. it mumbo jumbo. That's racist. Well, <laughs> I want to see Banjo Kazooie cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> How do I? <laughs> Different reasons. <laughs> You're not paying attention anyway. You're looking at IMDb, I imagine. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm purely going off my own head at the moment. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think, what else has Keanu Reeves been in? Interview with the Vampire, Speed. Um, oh, Speed, that's a great movie. He's actually acting in Speed. Well, he, you know, they, they put him on that bus and... <laughs> the, that, that, uh, that, that, I, that, that was real. <laughs> <laughs> no one told him. Um, it's Speed is a surprisingly good film. It holds up really, really well. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't argue with that. I, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen it, but... Um, mm. Seriously, if anyone's actually interested in, in the gameplay while we're talking, they're going to be, and they know this game, they're going to be just going mad at me. Nah, they're not. They really want to hear our opinions on Speed 2, uh, Cruise Control. Uh, Speed 2, uh, I mean, I've seen Speed a few times. Speed 2 I only saw once. Uh, I didn't realise it was Willem Dafoe until, like... Um, until he started creeping into your nightmares. Spider-Man or something. Um, <laughs> Spider-Man or something. <laughs> no, because that's like the, you know you, you've got certain films where you suddenly start mm. recognizing actors and yeah, and obviously Spider Man was the film where you're like, oh, Willem Dafoe, okay, uh, Tobey Maguire, okay, uh, and then they appear into your consciousness. Um, mm. It is, isn't it? It's funny how that happens with certain actors, isn't it? Because uh, I'm trying to think of examples that they will escape me for now. My God, oh, all the this whole time. Oh, oh. That is, <laughs> oh my god, that is ridiculous. Sorry. Oh, Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> I must have been around there. Oh, sorry, what are you saying? <laughs> there are collectathons, and then there's Banjo Kazooie's way of doing collectathons. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there are certain films where, uh, when you're younger, before you're sort of like versed in an actor, you go, ah, oh, why did they choose this guy? Um, uh, um, that was it. Uh, when Gary. Um, Gary Oldman was cast as Sirius Black, and um, uh, David Thewellis was cast as Lupin. And I was like, oh, what a waste. I wish Gary Oldman had been cast as Lupin, because I don't know who this Thewellis guy is. Um, and now I look back going, oh, I wish he'd been like a more vital character, because David's the man. Mm. Gary Oldman can take a flying leap, and I like Gary Oldman. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting how your perspective on, on films changes over time based on like your expanding repertoire of actors. Yes, exactly. Um, I only really know... Why aren't you moving forward again? I thought we got over this. Um, only... <laughs> He's working on Ant's logic now. He, he is. does whatever the Queen tells him. <laughs> um, Trying to be sugar. It is to the left. The first time I th saw David... Um, is it Thulis? What did you say? I've never is? been able to pronounce that. I just call him Thwellis. Thwellis? It's probably Thulis. It was in Fargo season three. Three, yeah. The that, that was the first time I uh, noticed him, recognised him, mm. and then yeah, it just seemed to have appeared in everything <laughs> since then <laughs> that uh, that I've seen. 
You found He's in the Big Lebowski as well. Really? Yeah, it's it's only a small role, but he's in there. Ah. Oh. Well, as I say, it's um. It was only after that that I began to recognise him because he was mm. such a fantastic character in the in the third season of Fargo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was it as well. Fargo was the case where I realised, oh my god, this guy's actually a really really good actor. Mm. And then it made me appreciate uh, Lupin a lot more in in cinematic form. Anyway. Yeah. So what else has he been in? That uh, I should. Tell you what, let's let's have a look. I'm betting it's a load of indie stuff. Mm. David Bulis. I need to get his name Who right. Else? Make sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know when they try and pronounce it on IMDb and mm. they go spelled like this. It's slash bracket H J U <laughs> capital I lowercase underscore T S forward slash. Oh. Um, oh, of course, he plays the shame wizard in Big Mouth. I uh, haven't seen it. Uh, it's, uh, he's, he's great in that. He's pretty much playing the character from Fargo, but uh, tormenting teenagers who now feel shame. <laughs> uh let's see oh he was in the boy in the striped pajamas that's a, a lap a minute kingdom of heaven uh the omen remake da, 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 da. um an inspector calls oh aries of course is in wonder woman i will destroy you oh that's right of course he is yeah <laughs> is, he, is he the the inspector in an inspector calls perchance because that seems a very if he's not that'd be a complete waste let's oh. have a look uh where's it gone, where's it gone? that just seems gone? like a role that would suit him down to the ground oh yeah absolutely you, you hover over the image and it's him as the titular inspector mm. in a really badly photoshopped image but it's still him yeah, I imagine he's great in that. Okay, so that's um, is it Mumbo Mountain? That one's called. That's Mumbo Mountain, done. <laughs> that's the David Thewlis portion of the uh, <laughs> podcast over. <laughs> now back to Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> I think this was another thing that Nintendo were really big on. Um, the furry scene with with this and Donkey Kong sixty four. And I suppose later on with Mario and his tanuki suit and, and flying hat. Um, but flying hat. Nintendo love their characters turning into animals. You never got that in PlayStation. They were secure with their sexuality. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. It didn't do anything for me. So, I mean, although, I, you know. It didn't at the time. I mean, I, I understand it now completely. But <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to fuck a bear dressed as an ant. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and the title for this episode. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it crops up in a lot of Nintendo properties where their characters turn into other animals to get shit done. They just put Spyro on a skateboard. Spyro has a skateboard? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Enter the Dragon, Spyro 3. That game was all kinds of cool. Well, Enter the Dragon. I mean, is it as, um, you know, sufficiently Bruce Lee based as they try and make it sound? Oh, absolutely, yeah. A lot of right down to the fact that at the end uh, you feed Spyro an aspirin, and uh, that's why they never made a fourth one. <laughs> Hi, oh, <laughs> too soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, speaking of um, Chinese properties dying on the vine, Shang Chi is uh, getting a very mixed reception. I haven't paid a single bit of attention to it, I must admit. Mm. Um, what what have you heard? Let me know. I've heard that at best it's middling Marvel tier, exactly what you'd expect, Ant-Man and the Wasp style. Um, not as bad and universe chats Black Widow, but all the more forgettable for it. And mm. a bit like the Cowboy Bebop fiasco, it's more the fact the main actor won't stop shooting his mouth off about uh, um, uh, perceptions and trying to link things into <laughs> oh so it's because I'm a Chinese actor um, rather than the quality of the film just not being particularly good and uh, yeah it, it sounds like Marvel may have a bit of a problem on their hands with him because he just won't shut the fuck up wow. <laughs> causing controversy 
Um, but beyond that, I, I don't know. Um, it certainly doesn't interest me whatsoever. In fact, I am so done with Marvel, and you know me, I'm, I'm collecting Pokemon mugs now, um, and I collect most things. And Black Widow finally came out on like pre-order and the Steelbook. And despite the fact that I've got every single one of them in Steelbook, I haven't even bothered placing a pre-order for it. Well, good, really. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I know that's pretty like uh, uh, dickish, maybe. That's what any normal person would be doing. Yeah, because usually I like to try and encourage. I don't know. Um, not like your spending habits or whatever, but you know, be like, well, you know, do the kiss your collection kind of thing, but. Uh, I think there's a place to stop with Marvel. It can't go on forever. And this mm. feels like the end. Um, yes. To me. And, you know, if you're not going to stop at this terrible um, Scarlett Johansson... Um, how would you just, I was going to call it a cash grab, but it's it's not even really a cash grab. It's kind of um, something... It's the fact that they had her signed up for a contract, wasn't it? It's like, damn it, we signed a, a, a six-movie deal with her, and we've still got her for, for one more Marvel movie, so mm. let's just... And the fans want it, and, you know, we want to say thank you for, for I don't know, being, like, a strong female character that kind of blah, 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 blah. Uh, mm. And then she went and shat in their face, which is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, and not in the sexy way that it is usually paid. <laughs> not in the nasty way. way not in the way that Germans turns me usually. On. Before. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. it was film that no one wanted, and uh, and they did it in the worst possible way. That's how I've been to explain it to people. It's like, oh, it's just refreshed. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, yeah, most people wanted a backstory. Uh, we wanted to see Budapest. I did not give us the Budapest. They gave us a story that no one wanted, and in the worst possible way. So it's just the worst of both worlds. Yeah, I mean, we did do just for uh, for those listening, we did do a full. Uh, I nearly said interview, a full review of um, of Black Widow. So go and watch that, where we kind of tear it to pieces, mm. and uh, if if, uh, if that interests you. Um, yeah, it was just... We could have done so much more now. That's the problem. I look back on it now and go, man, we, we we barely even scratched the surface of why that film's bad. Well, we couldn't really be bothered, I think. That was kind of one of the main yeah, points. We, we we had the opportunity to do a, um, a full uh, deep dive with the scene-by scene, and I think neither of us were really that interested because it's just such a waste of time. There's not... There... I mean, the more I think about it, the more it really does feel... Um, on par with Captain Marvel and um, uh, Ant-Man and, and the Wasp for just how mm. just much of a shit show it is. It's, it's really n nothing. I can barely remember anything about it, uh, I think. Um, well, no, that's not true. It's not that I can remember barely. I can remember a lot about it, but it's just everything that I can remember is terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... So, I I would argue that Black Panther's worse than Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel was like, here's a new character, she's shit from the outset, but ba Black Panther said, hey, you know that really awesome character from Civil War who was complex and nuanced and and powerful and and strong and just really really engaging? Well, here he is, but he's pathetic and quibbling and he, he doesn't know what's going on at any one point it's just like who is this character mm. i've only ever seen it the once so i probably need to go back mm. and watch it again um i enjoyed it enough at the time um uh, but it's I... just it's a completely different t'challa for the one in civil war he's yeah. a completely different character he's weak and ineffectual by comparison i think it's, it's... i i never mm. had anything invested in the character though so so maybe that's it and um yeah, I, I don't know. I think a lot of... The, there's so much base around... I mean, you, you've got to say it. There was so much just kind of hype around the race mm. of the character more than anything else, more than whether it was a good yeah. going to be a good film that kind of that was what was overshadowing everything about it. And so... And it's such a shame because I'm, I'm working my way back through because it's sacked um, Marvel Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Um 
uh, sorry, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. God, I'm tired. Um, and he is such a great character in that. He, mm. he doesn't carry the show because every character is well written as the next. But, you know, Black Panther, whenever he's not on screen, you're going, oh, man, I wish Black Panther was on. And then he comes <laughs> back on screen. It's like, yay, he and won't that, disappoint. And, and he never does. And that's what everyone um, says. And it just does show. They're yeah, always saying, he is a hey, really, really good Black character. <laughs> What happened there? Yeah, the the MCU has has uh, not been doing a good job. Well, I, I think everyone kind of knows that at the minute, don't they? I, I don't mm -hmm. think anyone has any particular expectations for it anymore, and and they really couldn't have done a worse job for it, introducing Phase Four than what they actually have done with um yeah with Black Widow and Shang Chi. I mean, you well, know, not even that Shang Chi, One Division, Loki, Falcon and Winter. Soldier. Uh, well, I, I mean, I don't know. I it, it depends who you ask, I suppose. I know a lot of people really enjoyed One Division. A lot of people enjoyed Loki. Um, Only because they're not thinking critically about them. Oh, but, Matt, this is. Are you kidding? <laughs> of course, they're not thinking critically <laughs> about them. <laughs> I know, and that's the problem. It's like, well, we could have them well written, but these people enjoy the crap stuff. So why even bother putting effort into them? It's like, you could enjoy them for being good as well. They just have to work a little bit harder. But then everybody gets good stuff. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, uh, just a quick mention about uh, this level that I'm on. The my, Yeah, again, the control is just shitting out on me. Um, Treasure, Trove, Tro Treasure Trove Cove was one of my favourite uh, levels for a long time. I don't know why playing it now, but um, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of nostalgia based around this this level and the annoying shark in the in the ocean that'll uh, come and get me soon enough. Um, sorry. I took exception to when you were up on the ship mast and you were talking to the mole. I out of there, and it's like, but where did he go? He was on a plank <laughs> of wood suspended in the air, and somehow he burrowed his way off the universe um well i mean it's just it's just consistent with um with the universe i would have thought it's just where where, where does consistent the, whimsy yeah where does the bird live in his backpack and how, how does he not break the <laughs> where backpack? Did the life fluid come from <laughs> exactly <laughs> um so i mean i mean we're only talking a uh, shout out to monkeysmo our long time a uh, friend of the show who um, really enjoyed uh, Loki, I think, didn't he? When um... He did, yes, until I insulted him personally and uh, he's never spoken to us again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, one of these days we will have like a proper discussion on Loki and it, it'll be a nuanced argument of, of why um, I, uh, I don't like that show and practically everything that's come with it. But... Um... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm justified in, in not liking that show. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, I think... I mean, these are all shows that... Uh, you talk about Fank, Fankum? Fa uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Fankum Jackson. Fank <laughs> um, Loki and WandaVision, and, and they're all shows that a couple of years ago, I think, would have just... I, I'd have been uh, desperate to... Um, indulging because of the universe building and Christ, I mean these are all characters that we've wanted to see on the screen for years and years. Finally, get their um, mm. their big moment and they do. And it's it's not. I mean, I really like Elizabeth Olsen as um, as, uh, as 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 Wanda, and obviously, mm. you know, Tom Hiddleston's made Loki his own. Um, and uh, and and you know the the Falcon and Winter Soldier guys. Um, Sebastian Stan and other, other guy that I can't remember his name of. Anthony uh, Mackie. That's the one, thank you. Um, you know, they're good. They're excellent. Um, yeah. It's just fatigue, just superhero f fatigue um, in general. Well, if, if it was well written, you know, and, and good characters, the characters that we knew, it wouldn't be a problem because people are saying, oh, well, the superhero fatigue was set at any point. And that would be the case for many, I'm sure. But if the character writer are consistently good, then people wouldn't get sick of them because quality has a way of, you know, remaining good quality. Whereas crap has a way of killing off enthusiasm very quickly. Mm. 
Possibly, yeah. I mean, you might be right. Um, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, yeah, it, it's difficult to say now, really. But, I mean, we're like, how mm. how far are we into the universe? Uh, 13 years into the MCU now? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, how long... How, uh, how long can you have an interest in uh, in that type of story for, I suppose? Especially when... I mean, the main thing that I feel is that we're past the uh, the um, the characters of interest now. It's, it's like mm. we're past Tony, we're past um, Steve, uh, the cornerstones of what that universe was. And to try and then deflect that onto uh, these other characters... You know, even though they are pinnacle, uh, pinnacle, even though they are cornerstones within the uh, the comic universe, it's like, yeah, but my investment was with um, the core cast, as it were, and true. But that's only well, in the most part, that's due to the actors just having good material and and making you fall in love with the characters. Like b before, you know. Iron Man came out. No one gave a shit about Iron Man. There were very few Iron Man fans out there. And then Robert Downey Jr. came and reinvented the character. And then same with Thor and Chris Hemsworth and and Chris Evans as as Captain America. You know, they took these like I'd say known characters that people didn't really care about and household icons. Hell, look at Star Lord and Groot and Rocket Raccoon. You know, those were Z tier characters. Only the most hardcore of the Marvel nerds, you know, knew about. And now their household names are on, you know, shirts. People stop in the street and go, oh, I, I am Groot. Um, and there's nothing stopping them from doing that with Shang-Chi, the Eternals, um, anyone else on the roster. It's sheer lack of talent in the writing department. It's nothing against the actors, but last them. <laughs> you know, these are talented actors and actresses. But the writing just isn't there to support them anymore and make them worthwhile. And that's where we're at, you know. If, if well-written and, and well-characterised, the MCU can continue in perpetuity. But now it's like, oh good, we've got uh, Taika Waititi is coming back for, for Thor again, so it's going to be entertaining. We've got one more James Gunn Guardian, so we know that's going to be of some quality. Um, Sam Raimi's directing Doctor Strange but not writing it so that's like cause for some you know dubious concern but that's where we're at now um, mm. it, you you could there's nothing stopping these unknown characters being the next Iron Man Captain America in terms of household names but there's nothing from the last four properties worth of material well Shang-Chi's out of five five materials worth of property that give you any hint that that's going to be the case yeah i do think i mean you, you're definitely right i think you can always get a um a good story out of bad characters i don't think that there's anything any reason why um why you should be able to uh just as oh i forgot that i was supposed to be doing this um just as you know you can get uh bad stories out of good characters um it just what, what the hell am I supposed to be doing? Why won't you drop the gold or whatever? Drop the gold, man. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I think you maybe reach a point where it's harder to um, uh, to do something interesting. Not only because we've already seen a lot of the stories before, um, right? So what was the problem with that? Uh, but with a character like Shang Chi, that um, I mean, where is the selling point for Shang-Chi, really? You know, when you look at how um, um, Iron Fist failed, let's say, is mm. uh, they're very similar-ish characters in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, and it's, it's, it's being able to, I don't know, just make them seem interesting, it, a part of a universe that has, like, you know, Thor. <laughs> and how, yeah, how, how you've got a literal god of thunder. How does a man who is quite good at kung fu compare with that? Yeah, exactly. And uh, and when you look at how bombastic Guardians of the Galaxy is, it's it's, mm. it's it is difficult um, considering that we've already. I mean, how many films are there now? How how many hours worth of content must you have to sit through to 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 get up to date on the full MCU at this point? It's 
Uh, I think there's 25 of them now. Wasn't it 23 of them in phase one through three? And now we've had Black Widow and Shang-Chi, so I think it's about 23, to, yep. uh, 25 of them. But let's say also that you went through like the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff as well. Oh, yeah, and the the Loki and WandaVision and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of uh, what I'm saying. Average of two hours, fifty hours, well over a hundred hours worth of content. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is that mm. um, you know you reach a saturation point with um, the stories you can tell, I guess, and um, I think just we're at that point now where it's like no one really cares, or at least I yeah. don't. Anyway. <laughs> one thing I would like to see from you know going forward is more tea up movies the way that yeah. thor ragnarok was like here's a thor and a hulk movie and it worked, worked really well one of the few things that i'm interested in in spider-man no way home is that it's like oh it's a spider-man documentary i want to see more of the interactions on a, a smaller level between these characters mm. and by and large it, it doesn't seem to be sort of utilizing the best of it if anything uh, spider-man feels like sony taking the piss saying okay let's use as many of the toys as we can at our disposal <laughs> so that we can put spider-man back in our universe and then you know close the loop off so we'll use dr strange it's convenient and, and also haha to that marvel yeah um yeah i'd agree i just mm. noticed that giant oh. x <laughs> did you hear that uh, venom 2 let there be carnage is going to be a pg-13 <laughs> what yep I thought they were going all out with it. Yep, so did we. No, they're not. So it's going to be let there be moderate carnage. Let, let there be a few oh. scratches. Well, that's disappointing. Yep. I, I thought... Why even bring a character? Carnage is a notorious serial killer who butchers people. And they're going, yeah, we can make that a PG-13 and win over the fans. I mean, I thought that, like, uh, one of the things that Tom Hardy was saying was how he wants to um, explore more of the gritty side of the character and stuff. I thought that was kind of the point. Oh. Well, at the end of the day, it's Sony, isn't it? Are they... And they're going to say, well, we want to make sure that we get as many children into the audience as possible because we want this film to make bank. So we're not worried, uh, we're, we're not concerned with making a quality product that's sort of faithful enough to the source material and the character that made it popular in the first place, a la Deadpool, we're just going to, you know, say, here he is, give us your money. Hmm. Well, I mean, after the first film, I can't say I was particularly invested in the No, absolutely character. not. It's just one of those things. It's like the... I loved Carnage back in the day, you know, from the... the he's such a one-dimensional character. But uh, I liked him. I loved the visual design of him. Um... And I've never seen him utilised properly in any material. And I thought, maybe just this one time, I'll get to see Carnage being Carnage outside of the comic books. And then they snatched away at the last minute. Well, I mean, it's Woody Harrelson. So, I mean, even even if um, it's not, you know, uh, kind of extreme in, in, in that sense, uh, Woody Harrelson, I, I kind of trust to, to do a, a good um, the representation oh, yeah. of, the, of the character. Mind you, saying that when he crops up at the end of Venom in the cameo, uh, he's, he's absolutely awful. I, I think they changed the character a lot from that, though. Um, they, they would have to. <laughs> yeah, they, they took the. Uh, I think they definitely listened to the feedback. Mm. Uh, For one, they got him out of that ridiculous wig. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I always thought Alan Tundick would make a good Cletus Cassidy, just from the one episode of Fraser where he uh, he becomes absolutely besotted with Frasier and recreates his life right down to like his apartment. He recreates his apartment from scratch and then starts taking on his mannerisms. And he plays a really good psycho in that. I thought, ah, oh, yeah, that would have been really good to see on a, like a larger scale where he's like biting the heads off kittens and spitting them at <laughs> nuns. <laughs> That's um, Alan Tudyke for people keeping track of Matt's inability to remember names. And <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Al Jim Tudyke. <clears throat> Um, Wash from Firefly and all that kind of thing. Um, and the Clayface Black Harley Quinn show. Yeah, he's getting more recognition, I think, now in uh, in those types of roles, isn't he? Which is nice to see. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's strange playing these games because I'm used to, like, grab mechanics as well. Oh, shit. Mm. Here comes the shark. Uh, and these don't have a grab mechanics, so... 
Come on. Another failing of Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> clunky. It's just so clunky to play. Is um, so I mean, all of your references kind of come. Fuck's sake, come from Spyro. Mm. Is Spyro more loosey goosey in how it um handles? Yeah, pretty much. Um. I don't know. <sighs> no, don't go into water. Banjo Kazoo is like you got to press this button to do a bird bat flip and do this to do that. Spyro's like, yeah, you press X to jump, you press X twice to hover, and then in the third game, it's press X twice to hover, and then if you're close to a ledge, press triangle, and you'll do a little, little bit of a like um, uh, a, a flap hover so that you can sort of clear the distance and get to a ledge. You sort of stop in midair and you just go up, but it gives you the the slight ramp. Ping in up to buy a shelf, and right. it was just that simple. Whereas Banjo Kazooie is like you got to get your bird legs out the backpack, but you can only do that <laughs> if you're doing this, and that's only good for certain jumps, and you can only do it on this platform. And you know, it's it's very counterintuitive, and it all looks so slow. You know that um, you, you did a while ago back flip where you sort of crouch down and then your bird uh, Kazooie flips you into the air. It also ponderously slow. It feels slow because the damn control is not working, but I'm not going to mention that again. Um, <laughs> I think that um, I've had enough of this now. Uh, you, you remember when like you're a kid and you can just literally play a video game all day, just literally for nine hours straight, mm. or, and you just wouldn't think twice about it. And um, I don't know if it's just because of... The... Like, I would. I, I'd, I'd play this game hours and hours and hours when I was a kid. I don't know if it's like uh, taste change or you just start to expect more from games or whatever, but it's like, yeah, how long have we been playing this now? Like na an hour and a half. I'm, I'm more than done. <laughs> I remember there being more tits in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. I, 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 I don't, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, Kazoo is always popping out the backpack going, go on, show us your gash. <laughs> that's, and and that's twice. then which would like come on over and flop her tits out. <laughs> Matt, that's that's twice now. I think you've. Um, I don't want to see your Pornhub history. Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> no, you really don't. <laughs> Wizard, <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Uh, Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Wizard of Oz meets Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Pornhub life. We, we just have. We have nothing. We can't apply. <laughs> nothing we do appeals to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we ban the real perverts for making content for us? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I mean, watching you play, it's it's not really enamored me to it. I thought maybe you'd sort of like draw out a hidden passion for this game that would make me go, you know what? Looking at it through through this particular prism, I can understand why it was so beloved and why Banjo Katui and you know, was equally beloved, and, and why... What was it called? Nuts and Bolts. Was that the sequel, or was that the third one? Um, yeah, that was the 360 game. Yeah, that was absolute garbage. I remember us playing, not us, but uh, my flatmates playing it back in the day. Even as a non-fan of Banjo-Kazooie, I thought, my god, this game looks a raging pile of shit. Mm. I... Yeah, I, I I have it actually, and I um, I think I played it for all of fifteen minutes, um, mm. and I just put it down. Yeah, I, I think it had a, a decent concept in it. Um, I don't know, it just it just didn't appeal yeah, to me. Yeah, but when so I down it. near Reich, but look how that turned out. <laughs> 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 I remember this. Uh... One day we'll be monetized. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no is the answer to that. Um, right, okay. But yeah, I'm gonna just, uh, let this play out, and that explodes, and, um, yeah. I think uh, an hour and a half of, of this and us chatting about absolutely nothing is, uh, is, is more than enough. So, that was, um, the Charisma Vacuum Hangout. Matt, do you have any, uh, final thoughts as we end this episode that we've just kind of done to fill in a space after a week off? Even the fucking buckets talk in this game. <laughs> Are you telling me that the buckets didn't talk in Spyro? It, it didn't even have buckets. It was above all that. It didn't even have buckets. Nope. 
That just tells you everything. It had a, a romantic and engaging plot between uh, a cheetah falling in love with an anthropomorphic rabbit, but it didn't have talking buckets. Well, I know what I prefer, to be honest. <laughs> um... <laughs> Actually, I don't. You'll have to. You have to quantify that. <laughs> um, next week, Matt takes us on a list of his uh, favorite furry characters. Um, <laughs> so... Oh, yeah. There's an idea. I know it's an Number idea. One, that's why I said it. <laughs> Lola Bunny, not from Space Jam Two, but from the original Space Jam. Really, Lola Bunny first? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I thought. Have you seen Space Jam? Yeah, I just, I don't know, I thought you'd uh, changed your perceptions around a little bit for some reason. Um, How so? Um, what's her face? Um, Jessica. Goof Troop. Um, oh, Lola. No, I, I I only got around to watching the Goofy movie um, a couple of months ago. What's her name? What is uh, her name? Roxanne. Roxanne, that's the one. <laughs> I'm... Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love Roxanne, but uh, <laughs> don't, was the first. Don't get me wrong. I do that dog good. <laughs> don't you dare misquote me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So um, next week, Matt will fill us in on his furry fetishes. Um, he's got a full week now to put that list together. So Nala. <laughs> I mean, she's a Disney princess, so technically she's within limits. All right. Well, is it? Is, is it what? What was the name of the character from Princess and the Frog? Was it Tina? Tia? Tia. Yeah, Tia. Tia, yeah. Yeah. It was like, she's a fairly cute frog. Uh, def, def, uh, what? A furry's invested in frogs now? I thought they literally had to have fur. Is this a new... Uh, there, there's all kinds of subcategories. Uh, each one has a weird name. There's like the bird furries. I think they're called like the featheries or the beakies or the kazooies or something like that. Okay. Well, uh, okay. That can be your um, special investigation then for next week. Is, yeah. Uh, enlighten us more on uh, on the situation. I think there's... there's... I would, but there's, there's an internet blocker. There's like a, a filter thing on my... Like... <laughs> on uh, this house's new internet system, so I have to wait until like gone ten in the evening to do any research like this now. What? Oh, that's ridiculous. You, you, they put an internet blocker on adults browsing yes. the internet. Yes, they have. Jesus. And it's one of those things that you can't exactly raise a concern about because <laughs> it instantly <laughs> sort of marks you out. <laughs> 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 Seven in the morning, you shouldn't be on Pornhub. <laughs> you should be eating fruit and fibre like regular folk. Yeah, I can imagine what that, uh, <laughs> what that letter to your landlord's like. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I was trying, I was trying to, uh, to, 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 to browse my, my, my daily indulgence of, um, of, uh, of, of, of horny perverts seven, and um, it won't let me. Can you, can you please? unblock the internet. I, I mean, can I... tell that the, the parental blocker was working because usually the letters you write are stuck together. <laughs> um, God, how many times have I tried to end this episode now and I'm still going on? How, how many things <laughs> the do problem I have? Is you keep asking for my thoughts and I have too many of them. Well, I, I keep talking about The furries. bucket's fucking talking this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Final, final, oh, final jigsaw piece. That'll you can't do. say it's my fault for talking about furries, but we're looking at Banjo Kazooie's ass right here, right now, and you tell me that I've got furries on the mind. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're done. Take it easy, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>